guys, today's the day we actually start working on a receiver for the rifle build. So can someone please tell me why somebody like Leopold would use 840 screws on their scope rings when the rifle industry is using 632? Get with the program, rifle industry. When I pull the trigger on this monster, I want the scope to stay put each and every shot, each and every time. I've done the math. Bigger is better. We're going to drill and tap out the 632 screws and put some 840s in there. Enjoy the video. I got bottoming taps without realizing it, so I'm kind of trying to be careful so I don't snap this thing off. It's giving me a little resistance down on the bottom of the hole. I'm not sure if that's actually from the kind of hardening of the receiver, but it's, it's definitely starting to give me a little bit of resistance here. Now it's starting to break through there. But I think just for maybe a rotation or two there, it, it may have tightened up a little bit on the, the hardening. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Nice and slow. Pretty darn close. This one's a little rougher than the other one. It's cutting, and I can feel the chip backing out and snapping off as I reverse, but just acts like it's having a really tough time. Last thing I want to do is get this tap stuck in the receiver. There we go. Finally through. I really don't like that noise. That was the tap getting stuck inside there. And that's it. I'm glad I didn't break a tap in this thing. I put this on a dial indicator and I was within half a foul on this surface right here. Uh, pretty impressive seeing how uh, <laughs> I didn't even plan it that way. But this V-block is uh, worth its weight in gold. It's starting to rust a little bit on the surface so I may go ahead and just put a blue on it. So for the purposes of this project, I didn't need to make a full deep channel V right here. So what I did is I just flattened it out on the bottom, doing some measurements, making sure that the bottom of my receiver wasn't going to hit that surface. But when I clean this thing up and put it away, I still have a couple of screws rolling around that I have to track down and make sure they don't get lost.
This is a uh, copper pot scrubber. Uh, you can get them at Walmart, pretty much anywhere. So I'm going to heat it up a little bit, make sure it's absolutely dry. I decided to go through the top rather than the bottom. It's just another milling procedure to uh, to counter bore the heads of the bolts. I, I really don't need to do that. When it's in storage, there's really nothing in the way there, so it doesn't have to be tight. It just has to provide a spot for the bolts. I'm going to countersink this first before I tap it. So here's why we uh, countersink before we cut threads. This one I cut the threads and then I countersunk which threw a chip inside of the, uh, the first thread so now I gotta go in there and clean it up. This one went in okay without a problem but uh, this first one needs a little clean out. Just applying a little cold blue on the threads. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes. Yeah, they're uh, below flush on top and bottom, which is nice. Doesn't take up any extra space in the toolbox. Um, nice little modification. So on this one, I do apologize for my hands getting in the way. What we need to do is make these holes bigger at a certain depth. That's about as good as I can get it right there. The bottom of this piece is curved. To fit the profile of the receiver so I can't exactly use it I mean I could but you're not gonna have the accuracy it's required to do this job so I'll just take it easy drill out these two holes using an 840 Philister screw counter bar so what I've got here are Philister screw heads in which the diameter is about 237 236 the diameter of this it's right at 249, 250, so I got a little bit of play on the outside there. Hey, hey, that's right on. And believe it or not, I am all the way around good to go. Done. I would have liked to clamp a little better, but you get what you get. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to trim these to length after I get the barrel installed. The back ones I can trim now because all they have to clear is the bolt. That's perfect. Yeah, so I have, what, uh, 13 thou of play on these uh, screw heads, and that right there is a nice firm fit. Snaps nice and clean in those really, really sharp threads. 75% depth. I drilled it out to, uh, what was it, 140? It was a number 28 drill bit. Fits nice. All I need to do is figure out my thickness here and add that to the back side here. Easiest way to cut these is to take a piece of sheet metal, drill a hole, tap it with the same threads, and then trim it on the uh, sanding belt.
There. I was just looking at this tap and I can see where it was rounding off. Those teeth were getting dull. I think that's why I was having such a hard time on that third and fourth hole. I'm going to chuck that one because, I mean, shoot, I got a package of five more there. All right, see in the bottom there? Those are my two holes. Got a little bit of a burr, which is preventing the bolt from going in smoothly. Not much, maybe five thou, but uh, got to get rid of them. That screw's already hitting. So by looking on the inside, I can tell I'm going to have to take about an eighth inch off of this one right here. And I may as well do the same to that one because the, uh, the barrel's going to be hitting that as well. So what I do is thread this through, stick about a sixteenth of an inch through here, and then go to the belt sander and grind it off. That's perfect right there. All right, the rear's good to go. clears. If it was still too long, it would be catching on the bolt lug. As you turn the bolt down, this bolt comes through, and you'll see a scrape mark right here, but uh, we're good to go.